exhibition opening today, July 21st, 2022, um, in the gallery. The exhibition is on view through August 31st, and we are excited to bring her work to Columbus. Um, Sabine and I met many years ago. I had the great fortune to work with her in my old gallery, Rebecca Evil Gallery, and I was introduced to her work at an art fair in Los Angeles in early 2000, 2002. And um, we did a few solo exhibitions together um, in early 2000, 2004, and 2006. And this is our first project back together in Contemporary Art Matters. Um, last summer, I was able to go and visit your studio in Berlin. Uh, which was fantastic after a long hiatus and we both have different routes. I was at the Pizzuti collection for many years and you were exhibiting and expanding your family over there. And so um, we find ourselves back together here in Columbus. So I'm um, a little history here. Sabine so studied uh, fine art and philosophy at the Art Academy in Mainz, and she did a year at the MFA program at the Otis College of Fine Art and Design in Los Angeles, and um, has had many subsequent um, studies, exhibitions, in museums and galleries around the world. His, her work is collected in numerous private and public collections in the U.S. and Germany and abroad, um, and. Her work combines painting and photography and painting and photography. Uh, so there's a whole range of, of series. Um, I guess maybe we can start a little, is what drew me to your work is the way your paintings really invite the person in and the uh, photographs as well, but there's a, a strong, female feminist point of view. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't matter whether it's painting or photography yeah. or approach. And there is a conceptual base that covers all of your work. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, so let's start with the first thing. You were mentioning the female point of view and actually in the beginning I did not really notice that it was this female point of view. It was just that I used old photographs from my parents' photo album out of the 70s. My parents lived one year in Spain. They had these beautiful slides, color slides, with these incredible colors, the sky, the ocean. And um, yeah, I just wanted to be part of it and use these images. And my father was always shooting, and my mom and my sister she was standing in front of the camera and that's how I started painting my mom and my sister and me and also I asked friends to look into these photo albums and I realized oh there is are these same some there is something in common something collective I found about it and I, I tried to find out or, what it is and uh, I didn't want to make it about my family or about one specific person. I wanted to be a bigger framework, a bigger narrative, and so I almost never showed uh, the faces. Yes, yes. So, and then I, I started to thinking, oh, why are why are there so less photos of my father being in leisure time and relaxed, and only these photos of him in his job and with his suit and very correct. And then I was starting to ref reflect on um, how we um, perceive family and who has which, which position and yeah, and this develops also then kind of a reflective philosophy feminist position I, I ended up. So it, it, that's funny, you know, and I know you have um, a love of the, the 70s and mm -hmm. looking backwards as well as, as looking at today and, it, and focusing on, on the family. But it, it, it's almost um, thinking about the power of memory yeah. and how we think about um, time and um, those feelings of 
being on vacation or being outside of your work life, mm -hmm. it's almost a romantic notion? Yeah, it is, I guess, a romantic notion because uh, we only remember or we more remember, um, memorize or recall <laughs> the positive things, you know? So all this trouble was there perhaps as well, it was too hot or too many mosquitoes, we forget and that's good so <laughs> And we capture these images and we have these memories behind these images, which is good, I think, uh, which is part of uh, human beings, how we recall or how we remember. And um, yeah, I, as you mentioned, I, I grew up in the 70s. I was fascinated by these patterns and these colors. I didn't know why. I mean, I was kind of happy that I, I had all these crazy dresses and t-shirts. And then, I mean, a, a, a lot got lost or we gave it to someone else, but there were little or certain less pieces we covered. And then they work like a kind of trigger. They work like a kind of trigger. I saw this shirt and it reminded me to this vacation. I could not even date it exactly, but we we have this distinction. We have Gedächtnis und Erinnerung. I don't know if you have this both or if you have only memory. So one you can call Gedächtnis. You can say, okay, I want to remember. I can remember, but Erinnerung. It has to come up. It has to be triggered. So when you sit together on a family party and there is this meal you always eat for a birthday and then you get the taste and the smell and suddenly you can remember something you know yes and, and there are other things you uh, and you cannot remember without these triggers you know they don't come up easily it's a fodder of feeling yeah you know, both memories but uh, mm -hmm. ideas or emotional memories and, yeah and smells and Taste. And music is often a good trigger. Exactly, music. And so was, I was also fascinated by this, uh, that w uh, the pattern can kind of capture uh, um, yes, a mood or uh, a story or yeah, a situation back many years ago, ago and then suddenly the feeling, emotions come up and they're, yeah, they're uh, in the room and you can, you can yeah. We override or just enjoy and then they <laughs> can store them back and they wonder when, when they come up again and they will come up again. Well, it's interesting. I think maybe um, your father's presence in the photographs is just behind the camera. Mm -hmm. so, but the images, you often see the people from the back and I, I feel like it invites you into the plane mm -hmm. to follow along. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think... Um, uh, because I have these um, patterns or these persons who are not shown by the face or you don't see the eyes, I think so therefore you can rely on it in a different way. You can say, oh, this rem I remember um, this was perhaps my mother uh, 20 years ago and I actually had this uh, um, had the situation that people came towards me and said, oh my gosh, we had exactly the same uh, chair with this fabric and I remember it so precisely or, oh, this looks like my mother. She was wearing this uh, skirt, this white skirt with the red dots. And so, yeah, and, and I, this is what I said at the beginning. I don't want it to be about one person, but I want it to be part of a bigger narrative because it's not portraying one specific person that is more like uh, pointing towards an inner picture or a mood or a situation one yeah, has experienced. There are definite more universal themes and they're not necessarily um, portraits of people, mm -hmm. but they may be portraits of an age of a person or a time in a life. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've seen myself in some of the younger models mm -hmm. uh, you know and at the beach or in other places and I feel like the, the, some of the difference from the earlier works that we showed 15 years ago to to today is um, women wear different hats so I feel like the point of view is shifting a little there are younger children appearing in them and both in the photographs and especially the series of the vases that we have here, mm -hmm. you have different ages mm -hmm. in, in the exhibitions, mm -hmm. and that you deal with women at different ages. 
and they, they still I do, uh, play with fashion, uh, retro fashion, mm -hmm. memories, mm -hmm. people. It's not one family, but it could be a relative of mm -hmm. almost anyone in a sense. Yeah, yeah, and actually they, I want uh, to be more diverse, so um, more different shapes of bodies and um, more different patterns. And yeah, yeah, as you said, I collected these, it's still about the patterns, I collect these old bathing suits and then I continue the painting of the skin. And um, So talk for a minute about that, mm -hmm. that um, sort of merging painting, because the photographs are straight, they're mm -hmm. not manipulated, um, but mm -hmm. they have painting in them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, is it about reality? No, it, it's kind of also how my work has developed. There has been this constant dialogue between painting and photography. I went back and forth. So in the beginning, I used the photograph as a model to make the painting. I re reversed the process and, and used the, the paintings to build up the set in my studio, search for a model and put the light on and photographed it. And in this series, uh, there is no painting, which is the first kind of starting point. It's just these old bathing suits, these vintage bathing suits. And, um, and it's again this pattern, and as I am alone uh, on this planet for more and more years, and I'm still uh, in love with these patterns, but I was also busy with what kind of patterns do we have perhaps inside, you know? Well, for example, when you're learning swimming, you need at least 1,500 repetitions so that there is this uh, automatic way uh, that the movement um, becomes a pattern into your body and that is unconscious, unconsciousness in your unconscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and so this is a subconscious, exactly. So, so it's still I'm still crazy about these patterns and the painting itself and the vases had, had been painted already at, uh, when you grow uh, 100,000 years back so it tells something about painting back and then but I also found it so interesting that I applied this pattern on the skin and I was questioning myself which pattern I have learned so far which I want to overcome which are helpful and also pattern to enforce not only in movements and yeah, so it's um, it has a different layers to it, and it can only be pretty, I think, or beautiful. Pretty is not, not, not the right word, but you can also go deeper. And you can, I was busy with meditation and mindset and neurology and and memory, and so yeah, it's kind of a, what a kind kind of a developed uh, series in my artistic work. And still, they, I want the people to be attracted from the surface. You know, you don't have to know all of these things I have been busy with. I want the, the images speak for themselves and attract me. I think it's a lot like um, a great athlete makes it look so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, the swan dive is just an easy fall into the water, and, and there is that kind of grace in these works where there might be a lot happening behind to get there, but they're very inviting and beautiful. Mm -hmm. So please come and see our exhibition. Follow us on Instagram, Contemporary Art Matters, uh, Sabina Daniel, um, and our website, contemporaryartmatters.com.